They are taking over private industry, subsuming ever greater uh, elements of the private sector, firing corporate executives, setting corporate salaries, wanting to do that beyond these companies that have accepted bailouts. They are selectively closing car dealerships, and we, we expect they're doing so for arbitrary reasons. We don't know and we don't say more than the facts allow, but we sure believe that there's something there that is suspicious. They won't allow many corporations or many states to reject bailout money if they can get away with it. They're abridging private contracts and ignoring the contracts clause in the Constitution. They're promoting cap and trade, as I mentioned, and socialized medicine. There's a recurring trend on the left, folks, and it is well-meaning government interferes with the free market. Things turn south. They blame the market and they demand that more government control. It happens from the auto industry, to education, to health care, to the subprime mortgage crisis. Once government gets its tentacles in, there is just no letting loose. We see it with the bailouts. It was promised to be just in the financial sector. I think Bush meant that when he, uh, when he implemented it. But now it's expanded way beyond the private sector, and it's not, it's not temporary as it was contemplated. It's going to be permanent. And yes, I believe that's the intention. This isn't about financial relief, but government control. Spending is literally horrifying, catastrophically unprecedented, unprecedented under this administration. Left alone, the economy would cyclically recover. But Obama views this as a crisis opportunity to expand government irreversibly. He views the stimulus as just a down payment. He is not the least deterred by these forecasts of debt, which he is deliberately piling up. He regards previous excess spending not as a reason to stop the practice, but as an excuse to continue and multiply it. But it must be stopped, lest our children be impoverished and enslaved. If we are 50 years old today, those of us 50 years old or older, uh, with a college degree, can expect to pay some $81,000 in our lifetimes, a piece to pay interest on the debt created with the White House's budget. If we're 40 years old, some 132,000, and these are conservative estimates, because as Obama said, he's just getting started. There is a plan to double the national debt in six to 10 years. Do you know what that means? I'm not talking about the deficit, the national debt, which means the debt will increase from now until uh, six to eight years more than it We've accumulated debt from the entire time of the beginning of the Union until today. Unbelievable. Obama is using the ratcheting up of the Bush budgets in the last year with the extraordinary TARP expenditure, which many of us opposed anyway, so I'm not going to apologize for it, and the, the economy going south as a new baseline from which he can then expand. In other words, the Bush average budget deficits were $300 billion and going down until the last year. But they went up extraordinarily in the last year, and they would have gone back down if we had let the economy recover and not done this insane madness spending. But Obama's acting like Bush was up to 1.2 as a matter of course, 1.2 trillion, and will now increase from that. And then he'll, he acts like he's going to slow it down a little bit, but look at his budget in the out years. It gets up to 1.8 trillion, or maybe it's 1.2. Well, who cares? There's a few billions here or there. But I'm telling you, folks, it's unsustainable, and this guy has admitted it's unsustainable. He admitted it's unsustainable, but has, had, has no effort uh, to curb it back. Keynesian economy, economics. It has never worked ever in history, including during FDR's efforts uh, during the Great Depression. But even if it did work, there would still be two problems with Obama's plan. First, his plan is not stimulative, like he says it is. The CBO, bipartisan CBO or nonpartisan, says most of it is not stimulative. But even if it were stimulative, we couldn't afford this doubling of the national debt. But again, the purpose of the stimulus bill is not to fix the economy, but to redistribute wealth, to engage in patronage, and to fund groups who will keep these misfits in power. Listen, socialism never produces prosperity because it kills the human spirit. When you separate rewards from efforts, people quit producing. American history was rife with evidence on this, with the utopian experiments uh, in our past and also uh, the international 
experiments, on the other countries' experiments with communism. It never works. Government control and expansion always tends toward absolutism. We have a corrupt administration filled with tax cheats, unapologetic. We have promises to lift rules on lobbyists, uh, uh, and now, I mean, promises not to lift rules on lobbyists, and now they reverse that position as well. It's Chicago politics writ large. We have ACORN group type groups funded. The Department of Justice the other day dismissed a slam dunk case against the new Black Panther Party. Even though no pleadings were filed, and thus the allegations were deemed admitted, and some Democratic commentators have admitted it's the worst example of voter fraud in our political history. On national security, we see President Obama traveling the world, engaged in a world apology tour. If we're just nicer to the world, to the other peoples, there won't be any terrorists. If we just hadn't attacked Iraq, there would have been no 9-11. Oh, wait, the time's off. Uh, if there was just no Gitmo, we wouldn't have beheadings like waterboarding will lead otherwise peaceful Muslims to be heavy. He wants to disarm our nuclear weapons. Iran deserves nukes, but not us. He wants to reduce, and will reduce, is reducing our missile defenses, while other nations are proliferating. He's released the torture memos, telegraphing and informing terrorists uh, about our techniques used against them to save lives. He is closing Gitmo despite two-thirds of Americans oppose it, and despite the fact that he has no plan as to how to handle the prisoners. Yet with all of this, we are the ones who are sheepish, tentative, and cowed. We're the ones who are accused of being extremists. My brother who articulates mainstream cons conservatism is demonized as an extremist. We're always the ones who have to apologize for our beliefs. But our beliefs aren't extreme, folks. We aren't the ones who sermonize about tolerance while exhibiting the vilest form of intolerance. We aren't the ones who crucify judicial nominees with personal attacks and lies because they honor judicial restraint and don't toe the liberal activist line. We aren't the ones who advocate exterminating babies in the womb, killing babies in the womb, let's call it what it is. We aren't the ones who apologize the world over for America. We aren't the ones who are gutting the military and missile defense because of some dangerously egotistical notion that we have, have the magic to turn evil into goodness with our charisma and eloquence, or even worse, because we stubbornly refuse to recognize evil in the world, except as emanating from these great United States. We aren't the ones who have so little faith in our fellow human beings that we diminish their dignity by patronizingly and systematically expanding the welfare state and increasing man's learned dependency on government. We aren't the ones who judge people by the color of their skin rather than the content of their character. We aren't the ones who pit economic groups against one another and stoke the flames of envy, envy and greed. We aren't the ones who punish success, reward failure, and promote Mediocrity. We aren't the ones who are always siding with the world's tyrants and dictators. We aren't the ones slavishly attached to leftist propaganda about impending environmental catastrophes. We aren't the ones who promote a secular humanist, humanist worldview that considers government a quasi deity that can perfect human society, the human condition. We aren't the ones who insist on moral equivalence between enhanced interrogation techniques to save innocent lives, which have saved thousands of innocent lives, and the infernal beheading of innocent lives. We aren't the ones who want to criminalize policy differences and prosecute the previous administration like a thuggish third world dictatorship for implementing enhanced interrog interrogation techniques that our party's leadership was briefed on and approved. We aren't the one whose party leader falsely accused the CIA of lying concerning those briefings. We aren't the ones who voted to give President Bush authority to attack Iraq because we believe, based on our best intelligence at the time, and that of the intelligence nations of all other major nations, that Iraq had WMD. And then spent the next five years attacking Bush for attacking Iraq and lying about Bush's alleged lies, saying a man they painted as the dumbest president in the history of the world duped them 